Okay, in this video I'm going to um, describe how uh, you can write down models for a certain class of problem using first order ordinary differential equations. So the class of problems that I'm going to describe here is what I would call um, inflow-outflow problems. And what I mean by that is if you have some kind of conserved uh, quantity, like mass, let's say, and you have some kind of a container that has a pipe dropping water into the container. You have water in the container with, let's say, maybe a certain amount of solute dissolved, and that's well mixed. That's a little arrow indicating well mixed. And then maybe you have solute in the water that's coming in, and then you also have an outflow from the tank, and that also has solute dissolved in it. And if the tank is well mixed, then the outflow will have the same concentration as what's in the tank itself. So this is a broad class of problems when you realize that mass is not the only thing you could um, handle with this type of formalism. Um, heat also works, uh, so you can track temperature of an object by tracking heat going in and out, or any other type of property that is conserved. So, uh, so let's let's get to the the method or the the approach. So, the first thing you want to do is determine what kind of quantities you're tr going to track. Um, so, in the I'm just going to focus on the um, water in the tank uh, as an example because it it illustrates a bunch of nice features. So, the first question you might ask is, do I want to track the mass of the solute, or do I want to track its concentration? And my advice to you is mass is much safer because mass is the conserved property. Concentration is not conserved. What I mean by that is if you have a certain amount of stuff in a tank with a lot of water, and there's a stuff dissolved in it, and you take out a certain amount of that stuff and you move it into a very small tank with very little water in it, and maybe nothing in there, let's say, um, the influence that removing from this tank has on the concentration here is not the same. Like if you decrease the concentration by six millimolar, um, then, well, in fact, you wouldn't change the concentration by anything taking it out of there, but you would change the concentration in here unless the concentration happened to be exactly the same. So what, I, what I'm showing here with this little example is that the concentration leaving or the impact of moving stuff from one container to another, it's not going to give you the same change in both. So that's a little bit of a dangerous game to play. So instead we deal with mass. Mass that leaves one container has to appear in the other unless you're somehow sneaking it off uh, in the middle of the process. Okay, so that means that we're going to deal with a quantity Q of T, which is the quantity or the mass of stuff in the tank at time T, and that's going to be equal to mass of solute in tank Oops. at T. Okay, so that's what we're going to track. So now let's get to the approach. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to fix a dt for now, a delta t, and eventually we're going to let that delta t go to zero. So we can think of this delta t as being as small as we want, but for now let's fix it at some small finite amount, not zero. And what I want to do is uh, add up add up all changes in Q throughout that dt. Sorry, delta t. So let's see, what do we have? What kind of influence we have? So if I let's let's do the simple case with water flowing in, that'll just make it a little bit easier. Water flowing in, no solute, and well mixed solution flowing out. Okay. Um, so um, what, what, I, what I want to do then is I want to figure out a way of 
relating, and this is a general approach to deriving differential equations, can I relate the quantity that I'm interested in at time t plus delta t to the quantity at t? So clearly, if I have q of t in the tank at time t, the change is going to be adding inflow and subtracting outflow. OK, so let's figure out what the outflow and inflow look like. If I'm doing it for a period delta t, and that delta t is really small, even though the inflow and the outflow may change in time, if delta t is small enough, I could treat the inflow as approximately constant throughout a small enough period of time. And so, let's see, the inflow would be the inflow rate. So if the inflow is a total amount of mass and the inflow rate is the amount of mass per unit time, then I'd have to multiply the inflow rate by delta t to get the total inflow. And the total outflow would be something very similar. It'll be outflow rate times delta t. Now, I put equal here. That's not quite true. It should be an almost equal because the inflow rate may change or the outflow rate may change with time. In particular, the outflow rate clearly should be changing with time if you're pouring water in and there's stuff with solute coming out because the concentration inside will change, which means the concentration leaving is going to change and that'll change it. But it's going to, we're going to look at very, very small intervals of time, so the change in that concentration and hence the change in the outflow rate will be negligible and we can ignore it in the limit that delta t goes to zero. So now I have this expression, uh, q of t plus delta t is equal to q of t plus, now I'm going to call this uh, flow in, do I have Fs already here? No, I don't. Good. Flow in times delta t minus flow rate out times delta t. And now we just have to decide in any given problem um, what the F in and F out are. Okay, so we're not yet at a differential equation, but the hints of it are here. And what I mean by that is I can bring the Qs over the same side by subtracting Q of t from both sides. And that's equal to F in, and I'll factor the delta t out of there. And, um, and here I'll go up here to the next page here. And now I get by dividing through by oops, by dividing through by delta t, I get something that looks like a pre-derivative finite difference or finite difference ratio. The change in Q over the change in T is equal to F in minus F out. And now I'm going to take a limit here as delta T goes to zero. And when I do that, our assumption that F in and F out were constant, um, at least at the moment that we're, or the interval that we're concerned with, is going to be valid, is going to be correct because the delta T is going to zero and the F in and F out won't have any time to change through the zero length interval. And I get a dQ dt out of this, and it's equal to F in minus F out. So now I just have to look at any given problem and decide what F in and F out should be. So if the flow, if the inflow is pure water, then F in is equal to zero, because there's no mass of solute. I'm, Q is keeping tra track of solute, so there's no flow of solute in. So, And now for the outflow, uh, if outflow is well-mixed contents of the tank, then F out will be equal to, well, let's see what we have. So I have a certain amount, uh, That's so F out, it's gonna be um, a product of two things. 
One is the concentration inside the vat, so Q of T divided by the total volume in the vat. So that's going to be what the pipe is sampling, right? Everything inside the vat is Q. And then if I divide it by V, it's the concentration everywhere. And what's right near the outflow valve or the opening is going to be have a concentration Q over V. And now I need to multiply that by uh, volume uh, of, you know, the volume outflow, which I haven't actually defined. So let's give that a name. So um, uh, let's say RV, where RV, where V is the volume of the tank, or the volume of water in the tank, because that may change in some examples. Volume of water in the tank, and R sub V is the uh, outflow. Oh, I should have, uh, yeah, let's call this out, R out. The rate at which water is leaving because we may have an R in that matters in some problems. So R out is the volume leaving per unit time. And so if I take the volume leaving per unit time and multiply it by the concentration leaving, I should get the total amount of stuff leaving per unit time. And that's what F out is. F out is the concentration multiplied by the outflow rate of water. Okay, so now we have a dq dt is equal to, f in is zero, and we have here a minus, and I'm gonna rearrange these terms, v or r out divided by v, and that's gonna be, um, let's just assume the problem is set up, so those are constant, but they don't actually have to be, and then we multiply that by q of t. So this is a first order linear differential equation whose solution we actually, as long as r out over v is constant, we actually know how to write that down quite quickly. q of t should be some q naught multiplied by e to the minus r out over v times t. And that is an example with kind of the theory of how we set up these types of equations.